Good morning, YouTube. I've been absent. I haven't been riding for a little while. I, um, you might recall, I crashed on the, on the dirt the other week, a few weeks ago. I don't know well, how long it's been, maybe a month. And just about, uh, let's see, two, three weeks ago, a lady hit me. I was going down a, a rural road, just a quiet road, you know, smaller road than this. And I was following behind her a little, a little more distance than uh, is me or than I am between that car and myself. And uh, I noticed that she was stopping. And she stopped right in the center of the road, like right in the center of the lane, eh? And there's only two lanes, one in either direction. No, uh, no traffic coming or anything like that. And so I thought, hmm, wonder why. Thought maybe wildlife, you know, could be a bear, could be some deer wanting to cross. It, like I said, is a rural area. And so, I slow down, I kind of come up behind her, I, I slow to a crawl, I look around, I don't see any wildlife, she's not signaling, so I think, okay, maybe she's, I don't know what, checking her phone or something, so I thought, okay, I'll go around her, I'll pass, you know. She's at a dead stop, right? Has been for a little while. The moment I get beside her, she turns in left, right in front of me, hits my bike, I go down. Yeah, so in the previous uh, crash, the one that's on YouTube, on dirt, I hurt my left foot. And I'm still kind of recovering a little bit from that. On this one, I hurt my right foot. <laughs> I mean, really. Both my feet. Man, that sucks. And I'm still recovering from that. So, I don't know. I don't know whether I broke any bones. I didn't go to the doctor. Usually you break these small bones in the foot, you know, the metatarsal. What the hell was that? There was this noise. I don't know whether you heard it. Anyway, uh, you break those metatarsal bones and Nothing they can do, you know, usually. If they're lined up, it's okay. I checked myself. Nothing seemed to be out of line, so... Yeah, I'm recovering. I can walk okay now. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I mean, the universe is trying to tell me something. Both my feet. I guess, as a consequence, I'm reevaluating stuff to do with motorcycling, you know. Kind of looking at uh, where I place myself at high risk and uh, eliminate some of that. I think that's, I think that's wise. You're probably seeing all this devastation. Look at over there, the house is burned. Burned to the ground. I'll get into that in a few moments. So I'm, uh, I'm reevaluating, like I say. Because it really, really, really sucks to be, I won't say immobilized, but limited in my ability to move around. And, you know, I, I, as you might know, I love doing my workouts, you know, the kickboxing. And, I mean, it, you, you can't do that with, with broken feet. Oh, man. So it really interrupts my lifestyle. And that's no good. I mean, health has got to be number one. Because without that foundation, you can't do a whole lot. So that's what I'm doing. Reevaluating, you know, some of the things like excess speed. Do I need it? No, don't need it. Is it fun? Yeah, it's fun. But can I do it in select moments? 
okay, I don't know why we're stopping here. It could be wildlife. Uh, can I do it in select moments? Yes. Are you wild? Yes, you are. Even though you got a collar on. Um, select moments. Yeah, pick your moments. Um, you know, I, I recognize that a lot of my writing, I won't say most of it, but uh, quite a bit of it, is excess speed. And that puts me at a lot greater risk. Stopping distance is vastly increased. So the chances of being able to avoid something, something like wildlife. A deer jumps out into the road at the wrong moment. I mean, if you're going 160, <laughs> that deer better be way off in the distance or you might have, hopefully you have good timing and you can get behind it, around it, but you can't guarantee these things. If you're going a decent speed, a reasonable speed, you got tons more chances of avoiding being hurt. Yeah, so this fire, we had terrible, terrible fires here. And you're seeing the aftermath. Well, some of it, a small bit of it. The fire was quite extensive, ranged for uh, quite a big area. There was, um, I believe, about 200 and what, uh, about 200 homes lost in our local area. There's one right there, two of them, three of them, four, five, six, six homes right there. Yeah, a terrible thing. More homes down there, you couldn't see that, I could. Lost. Totally burned down. There's more. My goodness. That's terrible. In a moment here, you'll see the width of this lake. I mean, it's, it's quite a big one, right? And the fire jumped the lake. The winds were sufficient to carry embers across the lake and they were still burning enough to ignite several spots on the other side of the lake and more homes were lost there. So getting back to the subject of uh, the crash and the message I take from it all, the two crashes, Actually, I think there was something else that happened, but I can't remember what. Anyway, more bighorn sheep. Um, getting back to that and my response to it, yeah. Trying to eliminate some of the higher risk riding areas, or not areas, but riding habits, right? And it leads me to wonder whether I want to do much dirt riding anymore. I mean, for a start, I, I don't think I want to do any dirt riding on these tires, the Shinko 705s, because that crash, you can have a look at it. It's a video entitled, I think it's entitled, I Crashed. Anyway, I'll put a link to it up there, or in the description, one or the other. And uh, I cannot for the life of me figure out how that happened. I mean, it was just so sudden and without any apparent cause, obviously, there was a cause, but I can't figure it out. Yeah, you look at the crash, you'll, you'll see what I mean. It's kind of a mystery. So on these tires, I don't really want to take that chance on dirt, I don't think. I don't want to get hurt. Not no more. I think I've injured every joint in my body uh, over the years, not in motorcycling, but in other stuff. And at 73, I, I don't really want to cope with too many injuries because they take longer to heal. Stringing up new wires. Yeah, a lot of people were evacuated from their homes for, I think, slightly over a month. 
and uh, in a lot of those areas was obviously the worst hit areas and a lot of uh, a lot of downed power lines that type of thing really dangerous shit so though they would have liked to have get back sooner you know, all the infrastructure had to be taken care of eh? made safe so yeah, I'm finding myself um, riding a lot more, a lot more, uh, I don't know, I won't say sedately, but um, relatively speaking, I guess, you know, more moderately, less speed, uh, more patience to just kind of be behind traffic without feeling the need that, you know, got to get ahead of this person in front of me. And that feels okay to me. It uh, makes more sense. Keep me safer. Yeah, you can see how extensive this fire is, eh? I mean, all these brown trees, that's, that's all burn area. We're going to be coming up to an area, it's Okanagan Lake Resort. And uh, it, was, it was burned down. Yeah, this is it. I don't know whether you can see anything. Yeah. Well, there's usually a lot of buildings there. Can't take my eyes off the road too much here. Yeah, all that down there, that's all gone, see? More. goodness. Look at all that. Well, I just turned around. I, um, I'm not sure how, how much further the fire went back in the other direction, but I have seen enough. It really is amazing how, how far it traveled, because the area I've shown you <coughs> is, um, is not the main part. Yeah, the main part was um, right in West Kelowna proper. Well, folks, I think that's all I got for you today. So, I hope that was, uh, I don't know, a combination of enlightening, entertaining. Hope you got something out of it. Anyway, you uh, ride safe, have fun, and uh, I'll catch you on another one.